overall, I was very happy of how the team played on Sunday. And I just want to create this video to show everyone how I see game film, how I uh, create and use numbers, and how we should all use them as we go forward and on our soccer journey. You know, it, I had to do a lot of watching the last couple of weeks um, just to kind of see what kind of players I had to get to know the players and get to get to know the team and also for the team to get to know me. Game film is an incredible tool for player development, team development, and coaching development. And we all kind of go at it for different reasons. Uh, for me, in-game emotions is the, uh, the number one thing for me because I'm seeing the game from the sideline. So I already kind of see, I can look around and see the 22 people on the field fairly easily. But with my heart racing and the adrenaline going, I may not be able to accurately synthesize what I'm actually seeing or if it's emotionally driven. Let's say there's a couple fouls, missed goals, a conceded goal or something like that. I may not be in the right frame of mind at that moment to effectively evaluate player performance, team performance, and um, my goals ahead. Uh, for the player, self-reflection and self-improvement, just going back and uh, seeing what worked well, what didn't, what what could have you done better. Um, and, and not only that, it's a great way for you to, you know, to send that really cool highlight of you uh, scoring the game winner to a, to a grandma and grandpa or a friend or, or to a college. Um, you get to see the whole picture. Players, when they're playing, you know, it's right in front of their face that, it's very, very small of what they're actually seeing on the field as the game's going at game speed. But the film allows you them to step back and to see all 22 people on the field, their relationship with their other teammates. They may have seen something uh, in the film that they didn't see on, the, uh, on game day itself. Uh, for me, the data versus the gut, I walk away from games thinking I saw certain things. Um, and that may not bear out in the data. Uh, you know, if there's a couple of mistakes, I'm thinking, oh, that I've got to work on this. But if I look at the data, I was like, no, I just happen to be focused on a mistake and not on a, a series of uh, a series of issues that I truly need to focus on. And part of that is the next thing is recognizing patterns. I'm looking for patterns. Are we able to do something consistently, consi consistently or not consistently? Um, and by recognizing those patterns, I'm able to then develop training goals and sessions so we can improve uh, not only as players, but as a team. So one of the things I can do is I can clip the game itself down. And part of that for, is for tactics, clips to show tactical info. It gives us information about our and the opposition's tactical performance. Um, this is just a steady shot of uh, the opposition, and they started with a 4-2-3-1. Uh, and so knowing that, we can now game plan for them in the future, because we are going to be playing this team again. And the other thing we can do is clip the game down to show successes and challenges. Um, <laughs> this is a great example right here. It was a great ball in. And had um, had with this gone in the back of the net so early in the game, we would have probably had a different game. But I think it was a success because we had created a wonderful quality opportunity in the opponent's final third. Now, if you want to talk about numbers versus the gut, um, I walked away from the game on Sunday thinking that we, we, we were the dominant team and it was an unfortunate loss. And sometimes you're going to have those games where you're, you're doing things that you want to do, um, but unfortunately the scoreline doesn't reflect what you did on the field. And these numbers show it. Shots on goal. I mean, more than twice as much. We had 24 shots on goal to their, uh, to their 11. Um, passes completed. 
you know, 161 to 95 possession, 61% of possession. That is phenomenal. Um, and also possessions one, meaning that we're, we're going to attack, uh, to tackles excellent and winning that ball back. So there's two ways of looking at these numbers. You can see them as the, uh, the chart and the graph, depending upon how you like it. It just, it really depends upon how you want to present the numbers, but these numbers right here don't lie to you. We were the better team. And now we have to learn from our mistakes, grow as a team. And so the next time we play them, have the outcome that we want. Some of the fun data that you can present and kind of look at, uh, these are a chart of where the shots came from on goal. Uh, we're on the left, they're on the right. This is for the whole game. And you can tell that we obviously had more shots, but the quality of shots that they are taking are a higher quality. They're in the box, they're in the center. And so they're converting at an 18% rate, whereas we're converting at a, at a lower rate. And we're, we were really driving at them and taking lower quality chances. So we're going to do a little thought experiment here. Um, when we look at the next set of numbers, uh, passing location versus possession location, and what are heat maps? Uh, what do the numbers say, and what style of play do we have based upon the numbers? So if I just never, never watched the game and just looked at the numbers, what does that tell me about our team? So right here is a location of passes broken down in rows of first half, second half, and whole game, and in columns of the initial third, middle third, and final third. So in the first half, in the initial third, we had 7% of our passes occurred there. 84% uh, of passes happened in the middle third, and 9% happened in the final third. In the second half, we had a little more passing uh, in terms of percentage in our initial third, but less in the final third. And the whole game averages out to about 8, 84, and 8. You're always going to have uh, more passing in the middle uh, or in the initial than you are in the final. It's just it, generally the way it goes. But uh, 84 is a high number for my teams, and I would like to uh, reduce that. And I'll tell you why in a little bit when I get, get down to the final evaluation. So this next chart shows you the location of possession. That means either passing or dribbling. Um, once again, the first half, second half, whole game, and broken down into the initial third, middle third, and final third. And you can see in the first half, we had 20%, 28% of our uh, possession in the initial third, uh, half of it in the middle, and 23% uh, in the final. And you can tell in the second half, we really, really dominated them. And they really hunkered down to preserve their lead as we just kept on looking for that, uh, that tying goal. Um, in the second half, it, our initial third possession drops to 10%, 84% in the middle, and 49% of our possession in that second half was in their final third. Uh, that is a dominant stat. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't convert with uh, higher quality chances into goals. So. so which brings us to what a heat map is. It's essentially a player... Um, player location on the field at any given time. So these are, the AI is tracking the players and the more players are in a lo certain location, the hotter, quote unquote, the map is. So you can see we are uh, on the left-hand side. We are going from right to left. And right there, we're mostly in the middle, kind of in a diamond. Um, but you can tell that the South Lake team they're a defensive shape. That 4-2-3-1 really shows up in their, uh, in their structure because they're more of a defensive structure going left to right, um, playing more time in the center or in their third. And given the possession statistics from the second half, the heat map from the second half is going to look like this. Uh, here we're going left to right, and we are spending a lot of time in their box trying to drive forward and they are 
going right to left and they're struggling to get out of their own half. And given the percentage of possession in the second half, this is exactly what I expected the heat map to look like. Passing and possession are vital to how we are going to uh, be playing here. My teams pass. We pass because we want to destabilize the opponent. And this chart shows full-time passing strings. And what a passing string is, is a string of passes longer than three. So we're three or longer. So we had a total of 15 passing strings to their seven. So we are already out passing them. Our longest passing string, however, was only five and we had no uh, passing strings six or longer, and that needs to improve. Uh, also, the number of passing strings um, total needs to improve. Uh, we did a lot of passing attempts, but we're unable to pass, put them all together into a coherent attack in the middle third, and that will go. I'll go over that in our next video. So going back to the thought experiment of what do the numbers say if I had not watched the game and just looked at the numbers. So versus Southlake, I think you guys played aggressively. Uh, the numbers bear that out about how many, how much possession you had, where you had the possession, where, where you kept the opponent. Um, thought you were very brave. You like to get stuck on tackles. Um, you, you guys go in for headers. You guys uh, press hard. Uh, you're not afraid of the opponent uh, or the ball, which is awesome. And almost you had as, almost twice as, uh, as many shots, possession, and passing as the opposition. To me, you were the better team. And unfortunately, the the other number that uh, doesn't lie is the score in the end. So, but it gives us an opportunity to learn something and to move forward. So, what style of play do you have based upon the numbers right now? Well, when you're defending, you press hard and immediate. You're successful in your tackles. As individuals, you do a very good job of making recovery runs, pressing that ball, winning the ball. And I think that comes a lot from your individual style of play. A lot of you, in fact, the team has an ox or what I call either an ox or a hero mentality, meaning that the ox you know, puts that yoke on and wants to drag the team with it. Like, I'm going to carry the burden and I'm going to carry this team. Or I'm the hero and I'm going to win and I'm going to do, the, I'm going to get, not so much, it's not a glory thing, is but I'm here to go win myself. And that comes through both of your defending and attacking. I'll talk about the attacking later. But in defending, what happens that is you go in for that tackle, but you don't have that decision for the next transition. So you won the tackle, now we have to do what? There's four phases of soccer. You're defending, you're attacking, or you're transitioning between the two of them, either from attack to defense or defense to attack. So now we have to make those decisions going from defense to the transition. When, you're, when your team is attacking, you drive at the opposition. You like to dribble and drive at the opposition. You're aggressive into bringing the game to the opposition. That is awesome. You're emotionally disciplined. Um, watching the game film, there was uh, some hard tackles and some in, some questionable things that occurred, but none of you lost your heads. You guys said, you know, so be it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to continue playing the game. I can't. I I have a. I can't coach that. It's very difficult to coach that. Let's just put it that way. So you have that already as a team. Um, you definitely do not build out of the back. Uh, your possession and your passing numbers uh, in the initial third shows that you do not build out of the back. You like to kick it long. Uh, you're a bunch of dribblers. Um, your passing attempts versus your passing completions. Uh, and where you're successful shows that you like to put a lot of touches on the ball. Um, and once again, it's, I think that also drives from that ox mentality, especially in the final third where like, once I get the ball, I want to drive at the opponent and it's going to be me and I'm going to do it. 
and once you get into the final third, it even shows up more. You had 50% of the possession in the second half in that final third. However, you only had like 6% of your passes. If half of your possession is occurring in the opponent's final third, you should have at least 30% of your passing when you have possession in that final third because remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to create high quality chances maintain possession and create high quality chances in that final third so we can score goals so we can win so like i said one of the reasons why i use game film is to develop training goals and sessions so we can improve as a team and you guys can improve as players um, given what i've saw in the first game and what i'm seeing in training uh, what I want to work on is attacking the middle for third for a couple more weeks. Uh, then we'll switch over to attacking the initial third to work on your build-up play. Possession is precious, and if we get the build-up play correctly, uh, we're eight, we're, we will be able to possess the ball and to destabilize our opposition as we go forward. And then we'll also work on defending in that middle third, using the diamond, um, and our four and five correctly to work on defending and the transition back to attacking. And so hopefully that little cycle and the next several weeks will um, improve everybody. So we can, when we do play this team again, uh, they will be shocked by our improvement. Thank you so much for watching the video today about game film numbers and how we use them. The last thing I wanna leave you guys with today is the understanding that a successful player takes responsibility and accountability for their own development and performance. I cannot make you watch the game tape. I cannot make you kind of self-evaluate what your performance is out like out there uh, uh, on the field. But if you want to be a contributor to your high school team, if you want to continue to have success on your soccer journey, you will have to take responsibility and accountability for your own development and performance. Thank you so much.